from the desk at Old Mates. You're watching Backyard Tech. When it comes to hardware raids, there's the age-old question. Which raid? Raid 0? Raid 1? Raid 1 with a global hot spare? Raid 5? Raid 6? Raid 10? Raid 50? Raid 60? It's like we're awash with hardware raid configurations. But when it comes to RAID 6 or RAID 10, which one do you go for? It's old mates Q&A and advice time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, if I had the opportunity, would I go with RAID 6 or RAID 10? Anything AV. Most things IT. Heaps of stuff about the 80 series Land Cruiser. Got questions, need answers and advice? This is Old Mate's Q&A and advice from Backyard Tech. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is Old Mate's Q&A and advice time here at the Backyard Tech channel for weekend Saturdays. And uh, well, I've been asked to do this regarding Raid 6 v Raid 10. Now, I've got my little RAID configuration table up in front of me here, so that I give you the right info from my point of view. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, we know people who... who th this is a hardware RAID video, okay? We're not doing a Z-Vol. We're doing a hardware RAID, all right? Oh, this is what I've been asked. Now, we know who with people who don't understand RAID, they want maximum capacity, so they just do RAID 0. And if you've been around the traps long enough now, you know RAID 0, yeah, fantastic performance, maximum capacity, one drive dies and you've lost the lot. Dumb, dumb, dumb. TV stations for a long time used RAID 5 for transmission. Parity bit with redundancy. Four drives. For RAID 10 and RAID 6, you only need four drives as a bare minimum. Okay. But there is a big difference between the performance of both of them. Okay, so for this example, we're going to use a server of eight hard drives. And the hard drive capacity is going to be two tera. Now in RAID 0, we know that's 16 tera. Dumb idea. Okay, stupid, 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 stupid idea. Forget it, forget it, forget it. Right. So we have the server. We have eight two terabyte hard drives. It's drive independent. Doesn't matter whether it's SSD or HDD. It's drive system independent. All right. We're just looking at this as eight two terabyte drives. All right. Now, if I bring up my little table here so that I can uh, give out the right info because I always get confused. Okay. So RAID 6 and RAID 10 need four drives as a bare minimum. Now, with your server, you need an OS drive. So we're going to do the operating system drive in RAID 1. Okay, RAID 1. That gives us the redundancy in the OS drive and maintains enough hard drives on the other side, so six two terabyte hard drives for something else, which we'll get to in just a moment. All right, so the OS, two by two terabyte equaling two tera in RAID 1, because you have one drive that is completely redundant, okay? Should something catastrophic happen, you've got that OS redundancy there, and then you can just, should a drive fail, bung the fresh drive in, job done, all right? Rebuild the array, the array rebuild is slow, but it'll keep you going once the drives align up properly. Okay, so we're now left with six by two terabyte hard drives. RAID zero would give us a total capacity of 12 tera. No, 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 no. Okay, so six by two tera. And what you need is a backup drive. Something to back everything up to. All right, so. With RAID 6, you would end up with around, 
six by two terabyte, you'd end up somewhere between six and eight, six and nine terabytes of total storage capacity. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Between six to nine terabytes out of your total 12 tera, because you'll have parity across the drives and redundancy, all right? But where you suffer big time is in your read-write performance under RAID 6, okay? It's slow. It's slower than RAID 5. Now, RAID 5 is looked upon as not so good these days. RAID 50 is where things are. RAID 5 for a long time was what I, I happen to know a couple of uh, broadcast stations in Australia used RAID 5 for a long time for video. RAID 5, which is what I run my servers in because I have the drive capacity to do it, is slightly better than RAID 6 in the performance. But RAID 6 will give you, out of those six drives, will give you somewhere between about six to eight, ish six to nine ish terabytes out of your total 12 terabytes left but you suffer in your read write performance badly okay so if in a small business or home environment that would be fine okay perfectly fine no problem all right, that's my point of view. I've done RAID, RAID 6 for companies before. Okay. So for a home or a small business or something like that where it's not really heavy IO on that server, it's fine. Perfectly fine. Okay. Let's flip the coin. Big business. A dedicated backup server. You need maximum read performance, a decent write performance, and, and reasonably good redundancy. 12 terabytes is left in your server. Okay, 12 tera. So you go for RAID 10. You end up with six tera. All right, because you've got six drives left, you end up with six terabytes because the parity and the redundancy is split across that group of drives. So you lose capacity in RAID 10, but you gain performance. Big time over RAID 6. So RAID 6 gives you better storage in the array, but you lose your read-write performance. RAID 10, you end up with 50% of the capacity, total capacity of the, the rest of the drives, but your read-write goes up. Okay, so in heavy data environments, say databases, um, um, cloud-based storage, right across the board, you'd go with RAID 10, especially in a heavy read-write environment where the server is under massive load, you would go with RAID 10. Yes, you're down half your total overhead capacity but you gain the performance okay now let's say it's old mate and let's say i've ended up with another server okay say it's another dell r730 with Again, eight by two Terra, all right? And we're gonna use it as a backup server, okay? Just for me here at home, just to say back up the Mac, the main PC, uh, the other half's laptop. So purely just a backup, all right? Um, We've got eight by two Terra, and we're gonna set it up as a NAS, okay? So, 
As always, I get Q store. Well, actually, before we do that, I write up the system. Okay, I write up the system and I do RAID 1 for the OS. And for me here at home, I'd probably do RAID 6. Maximum capacity of the, the rest of the two terabyte hard drives. So you end up with around, say, say for argument's sake, it's about nine terabytes left. Okay, out of the six that are left over from the OS drive. So I say I get nine terabytes left. Okay, it's just backup. It's nothing else. There's nothing else being used. It's just backups. Okay. Now, out of the, say that nine terabytes, I I back up the main PC as a NAS. So it's a network attached storage. It's not iSCSI. It's just a backup server. Um. So I say to ASUS, right? Because that's what I'm using now. I say to ASUS, back up to. M drive, okay? So I get nine terabytes to back up the main PC, the Mac, and the other half's PC, okay? And I suffer the main PC going down. So I point ESUS to pull the original backup from the R730 in RAID 6. Okay, the restoration time coming back is going to be slow because the read-write performance of RAID 6, whilst you have, you know, 9 terabytes from 12, you suffer coming back the other way. So it's slow to back up, slow to recover. RAID 10. I have half the 12 terabytes left over, so I've got 6. But I get a decent read performance and a decent read-write performance, which means the backup is quicker and the restoration is quicker, but I'm losing space in the array. So it comes down to personal preference. If you are going to use that server for heavy read-write environments, you'd go RAID 10. If you're just using it for backups and nothing else, you're just backing up whether it's a system backup or whether it's just backing up raw files, you know, like from Windows, you know, right click or, you know, unhide everything, right click copy and then send it over the drive as a, the user folder backup. Same with, say, uh, Linux or Unix, right click copy and then just paste it over there. It's going to take a while to get there and a while to come back, but you've got it backed up under RAID 6, under RAID 10. It'll get there quicker. It'll come back quicker than RAID 6, but you've lost the capacity. What you need to figure out is what do you need? Do you need maximum capacity with lower performance or do you need higher performance with half the, half the capacity of the residual drives left after you've done the OS? What I did with the 720 is there's two RAID 1s and RAID 5, because the drive capacities are different across the board. But if you're running the same capacity drives in your server, right, you could run, as I said, you could run the OS as RAID 1, who cares, all right? And then you run the rest of the drives, but it, you, you gotta figure out, is it gonna be a heavy read-write environment and you don't mind having you know, losing half the capacity of the residual drives, or do you want to maximize the amount of capacity and forego your read-write? Now, for me personally, I've done RAID 5 and RAID 6 for a home and small business. I've only ever done RAID 10 once, and that was because I had to do it, um, just because of what the server was used for, okay? Um, so for home, you could go with RAID 6, but, you know, you don't want to be doing too much heavy work on the server because it is going to be slow. So maximum capacity for the RAID, slow performance. Or you could go with RAID 10, 
halve your performance, but improve your read-write capabilities. It really comes down to personal preference. It comes down to your situation. And what that situation needs will guide how you set up that server. All right. That's that's probably the easiest way I can explain it, guys. So there we are. Old mate's Q&A and advice. Stick around. AV coming up for you shortly. Have a good one. Cheers.